Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Coach Gia Fun Day kicking in for you on for yours. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm back with another one on Black Europe. And, um, you know, this one, too, also got to deal with the, um, and what can I say, you know, about um discovery of the Americas, too. You know what I'm saying? How the Moors had a discovery and the hand in it. Now, this comes from um, Columbus and the introduction of Mesa to Spain by M.D.W. Jeffries. You know, we wrote this for anthropologists back in 1955. You know, it was only six pages. You know what I'm saying? So let's see what he got to say. Now, he's a pretty good, damn good British historian. He made, you know what I'm saying? He's okay. You know. Columbus and the introduction of Mason to Spain. It is generally assumed, and a strict purpose I might assume, but there's no evidence that he did so. That Columbus was first introduced Mason to Spain. So there's no evidence off rip. He just tell you in the first paragraph, there's no evidence that Columbus introduced Mason to Spain. All right. An examination of temporary accounts and contemporary evidence does not support the contention that Columbus was first introduced Mason in to Spain. Randolph and Reeves, 1939, page 7, write on November 5th, 1942. Two Spaniards who Columbus had delegated to explore the interior of Cuba were termed with a portal of a sort of grain they call maize, which is well taste, baked, dried, and made into flour. And so was the introduction to the white man of plant, which has since become the standing to total production, the second most important food of the world. This account, on the face of it, appears to be the European's first introduction to maize. Is it? If it is, why is it the earliest name for Spain for maize, Tiago de Suma, is not maize or Indian corn? Why also does Bafa state that according to Verbiotto, Maize was first introduced to Spain by the Arabs who, call, who were also called Turks. Columbus returned from his first voyage on 4th of March, 1493. Peter Murder reported that in the eyes of March, 1493, the Cardinal Santa Sofa on that kind of Columbus discovery. And he described the use of maize by islanders of the West Indies. As ambiguous have arisen over the translation of Peter Martyr Latin text, I shall quote the Latin and did give another translation followed by the specialty done for me by Mr. Wentworth of the Classic Department of the University of Waterstown, where this article was being written. Minotti, 1912, translated in page 46, translated as above. The islanders also made bread of a kind of mullet similar to which is which is this plainly among the Maltese and Andalus. This millet this millet is more than a palm length and point and ending in a point and the thickness of the upper part of a man's arm. Like I said before on this quick sidebar tip, the islanders also made bread with a kind of a millet similar to, to which that is this plentiful among the Maldives and the Andalus. Andalus is Spain by the way. The grains are about the form and the size of peas. While they are growing, they are white, but become black when white. When, when ground, they are whiter than snow. This type of grain is called maize. On the assumption that the next translation is correct, what can be meant by the words? A kind of millet similar to which is this plentiful among the Maldives and Andalus. If maize had not reached the new world, the old world, with what could be, what grain could then be growing plentiful and Mondelez and Andalus could maize be similar? It could not be strong because that grain is common throughout the Iberian Peninsula and was not confined to Milan. Milan is in Italy, the money, you know what I'm saying, another place where the Moors went, in Andalus. Nor is it similar to, similar to the maize. I maintain that Minnesota translation is not as an accurate one, and that Peter Mayer is saying that the grains cultivated in the West Indies in the Malan and Andalus are the same, except that the West Indian grain is black when it ripens, area where the Malus, where the, I mean, the Malan and the Andalus is not. As a youngster, my thing in 1902, and in Southern Rhodesia in 1903, I also saw blue-black maize as part of the crop grown by the Bantu. 
Moved to Bay Forum of a Toilet Farm, New Amsterdam, East of Travail. When I was there in December 1950, we marked that he had planted as an experiment the blue black maize which he obtained from local natives and found it would grow under trees provided the shade and was not too dense. Mr. Thumb's translation is more accurate and runs as follows. They also make bread without great difficulty from a certain millet grain of which there are great abundance among the Amaldives and the Andalus in Spain. This grain has a pot longer than the span of a man's hand, extended to the point and the thickness of a man's upper arm. The grains are fastened together in remarkable ranges by their nature and in form and size compared with peas. While unripe, they are white. When they have ripened, they become deep black. When the ground they surpass snow, surpass snow and whiteness. They call this kind of grain maize. There, Peter Modern in 1493, six months after the return to Columbus from his first voice, stated that maize had already flourished in Andalus and Milan. Milan is once again Italy, where the Moors is at. But in the West Indian, maize was black, whereas to the best of our knowledge that in Andalus and Milan was not. Otherwise, these are no longer be an object in the drawing of attention to the dark colored Caribbean maize. Columbus, as I shall point out, confirms Peter May's statement about maize growing profusely in Andalus, which once again is Spain. No, however, there is no mention by either Columbus or Peter Modern that any maize had been brought back from the West Indies. It was during Columbus' second voyage that the mention of bringing back maize occurs. Peter Martyr, 1912, I-84, um, in my next translation, reported to Colonel Sivan that the return of Spain of some ships from Columbus' second voyage writes, My messenger will receive your eminence with some of those black and white seeds out of which they, the West Indies, made bread. Fare you well from the court of Spain, the third day of the Chaldeans of May, 1494. Further on, on page 107, he refers to maize bread as similar to Manese bread. As he said, Milan is in Italy, where the Moors is at. Now Columbus left for a second voyage on 12 9 1493 and returned on 11 6 1496. So that's clear that he had sent back a vessel in 1494, and it was this vessel that brought the dark and white maize grains to Peter Marta. Columbus sailed on his third voyage from Spain on 35, 1498. It was during that voyage he writes a letter mentioning the maze for the first time. But his statement is so ambiguous that one cannot tell whether he means he brought maize from West Indies to Spain or Spain to West Indies. According to Jane, 1933, page 22 and 23, it was dispatched from Española on the 8th of November, 1498, which describes the discovery of Trinidad. In this letter occurs the following Spanish text with Jane's translation. Jane's translation runs, In wine of many kinds, white and red, but not made from grapes. The wine must be made from fruit of different kinds, some from one fruit, some from another, and also some that be made from maize which is a plant bearing an ear like an ear of wheat. Some of which I brought home, and not as much in Castile. It seems that the best as regarded, the most excellent, has great value. The late Mrs. McClare of the Government Library, University of Waterstown, drew my attention to this in, to an ambiguity that lurks in this patches. It is evident that something will arrive in Jane's translation of Spanish words. The little translation is, of which I collected, some of there and there is now much in Castillo. It is clear the words are ambiguous to what locality does there refer, and I collected some there to Castillo or the West Indies, which. So are these words ambiguous, ambiguous are these words that major translation the same patches is opposite of James. Major, 1847, page 122 writes, wine both white and red, not made, of grapes and apparently produce a different fruits. The most reasonable inference is that they use maize, which is a plant that bears a spine-like ear of wheat. 
some of which I took for me from Spain, where it grows abundantly. The manner of, of ambiguity in words was referred to the British Museum of C.B. Oham, the principal keeper, and kindly replied in 1950, in 1 6, 1951, as follows. The museum's Spanish expert informed me that he does not feel confident to answer your question. However, he says, however, that though the Spanish text you quote is very ambiguous, most authors of the opinion are of the opinion that Columbus brought maize back with him from the New World to the Old. He makes further to the point of the fact that the Columbus described maize indicating that it must have been something new. The words require investigation. They occur late in the letter written in October 1498 in the West Indies. Columbus had left Spain on May of the same year, and consequently in this statement, there are much maize in Castile. It must be important that he possessed before he left Spain in 1489, but Peter Motter in November 1493, six months after Columbus returned from his first voyage, had made the same statement that not only was there plenty of maize in Andalus, which lies south of Castile, but there's plenty of it in Milan. Milan, once again, is in Italy. Peter Meyer was from Milan, and so would know. Consequently, the anger bigotry cannot be resolved, for it's equally possible that Columbus took maize from Spain to the West Indies as he brought maize from the West Indies to Spain. The question of this anger beauty and in text of Columbus' letter can there not therefore be resolved. What is clear is that one of the ships in 1494 brought maize to Spain, where according to both Peter Meyer and Columbus, it was apparently already grown in quantities. Is there any evidence of maize of the old world before Columbus ships brought it to Spain in 1494? There is a considerable amount. Now, sidebar right quick. Now, the reason why this maize question is so important is because maize comes from Mexico. You get what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It, 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 originated, it, supp it supposedly originates in Mexico. So for the maize to be over there in Africa, they had to go back and had to be flowing boats back and forth to go get that stuff. You know what I'm saying? There's considerable amount. Let's back in here. The Portuguese navigator, Venan Fernandes, between 1506 and 1510, wrote a description of the coast of Guinea, including that of the Isles of Santa Mon in the Gulf of Benin. Now we're in West Africa. The text of his description was a French translation of Mondi and Terrace and Mani and appeared in 1951. And from it, on page 137, the following English version is given. Mano Zambu first here in San Tomi. Only in 1502 was it sown. Before that, it was always transported by boat from Guinea. I should show that the Malazama is maize. And here, Fernandez is stating it's an export crop before 1502 from Guinea. So here in Guinea, before 1502, it flourished exceedingly as it flourished in Spain and Italy. Blake, 1942, first, uh, first volume, page 146, translating from an unknown Portuguese pilot who wrote a Sierra of 1540 about the island of Santiago, one of the Cape Verde Islands, writes, at the beginning of August, they begin to sow grain, which they call Zimbaro, or in the West Indies, maize. It is like chickpeas and grows all over these islands and along the African coast. As a chief food of the people, there's no mistaking that Zimbaro means maize. Sora de Sora, 1587, Page 162 writes, that Sasa Ultra, oh, I can't read that in Portuguese. Now, Grama Guinea is still in Portuguese in the name of maize. Finally, in Novo Dictionary of Portuguese, published by Leonard Barrow, Lisbon, 1937, gives a Zambra adjective as Milano and Indian corn, another name for maize. Rizamo, in his Del Delegation of Negro, the Vaggy, of the first volume was first published in 1550. Quotes a letter written by Juan Cosar describing Madagascar in 1514 and 1515. The relevant passage is, during our stay in Mozambique, we found two small Portuguese vessels, which came from the islands of St. Lawrence, an old name, a slave name, another name from Madagascar, 
the white name. Here, unlike otherwise, silver and grease, ginger, and the Turkish corn and cloves. The Hira is under the command of Moors, who with cotton cloth and their merchandise in India come and purchase produce of this island. It is first seen at the distance of 1500 by Diego Diaz and discovered by Ray Piero Canto and Fiero Suarez in 1506. Yet in 1514, this island is a squirting maize or Turkish corn as a commercial crop. The Italian Pizzetta, who accompanied Magellan around the world, reports the presence of maize. In Robinson, 1906, page 45 and 187, translate one finds Pizzetta was off the coast of Brazil in 1519 and among a collection of words used by the beginning in his maize, which was better recorded and translated to Mexico. In 1521, Magellan ships was off the eastern side of the Philippines Islands. These navigators were the first Europeans to reach them. There, they found an Arab who warned the inhabitants of these Europeans. They better collected local native words for the commodities offered by the provider for, for these Filipino islanders, and among them was the word hamas for grain which the better scene with his own eyes turned late to me ago. The word has been previously used for maize. There were just good European documentation evidence to discredit the idea that Columbus was the first to brought introduce maize into the old world. It is necessary to review the position adopted by Stoner and Anderson, nineteen forty nine, page three fifty five to four oh four, over the discovery in Assam of a primitive type of maize. Assam is in Egypt, by the way. The characters carry that the Sani maize is unknown to Mexico and Central America. Mm. So this maize right here, this type of corn don't even come from America. It's a straight up African corn. In South America, it is approached only in hybrids from the Eastern rivers and certain primitive popcorns. In prehistoric times, varieties of similar kernel crops and kernels were the only type of maize on the west coast of South America for a very long period. The same and the similar varieties are widely through the spotted distributed to Persia and to Turkestan, to Tibet, to the island of Hini, which is in China, or you know, um between China and Vietnam. They are always among the primitive and conservative people. This race of maize is plentifully and readily unproductive crop for utilized for brewing, for popping, for green corn, must have originated for Asia or been taken there in pre Columbian times. Stoner and Anderson, page 49, page, I mean, year 1949, page 395, favors the Trans Pacific migration of maize. But whether the migration of maize from Asia to America or vice versa, they are unable, unable to say. As they are marking directions and directions that the evidence does not indicate. They also, in page 340, 394, make an unwarranted assumption that because today a printed type of maze is cultivated in some, that this primitive type that was introduced, the possibility that the primitive type of maze is a recession from a less primitive original is not even considered by them. Whether this primitive type rose independently in Asia and in America, or was introduced in Asia by pre-Columbian times, or was introduced in America from Asia, makes little difference to the problem that Stoner and Anderson have to solve. This problem does not confront me as I show later on. The problem is that a man in America, whether it rose there or was introduced there from Asia, this primitive maze is considered an ancestor in the Americas, and less primitive type of maze is found there when Columbus arrived. Now there are less primitive types of maize were also invented in the old world before Columbus was born. On Stoner and Anderson theory, these old world progenitors, primitive types, while remain primitive in Assam, are the answer to less primitive types that flourishing in the old world since Columbus was born, yet they're identical with their American types. I reject Stoner and Anderson theory, yet I have to solve this problem to the present day of the primitive type of maize and Aswan, etc.
I accept Valley Vong explanation, which is that these isotypes are recessives of the very existing varieties. The appearance of recessive can occur every few generations, hence to attempt to date these isotype primitive types by appealing of permanentness of their user, and the variance is irrelevant. In Valley Vong, 1949 to 1950, page 21 to 19, Right in 1935, he said, the earliest and the largest independent center of the world agriculture and original agricultural plants consisted of mountain ranges of the central and western China, together with the adjacent lowland. The following is a list of the chief pandemic plants in the center, in the center, in this center. The group of waxy maize varieties, zest maize, secondary center, original type recessive form, natural mutations and hybridizations. In the secondary center of origin may give rise to new form which is often a practical interest of the plant breeder. Of the accessory interest of the now recessive waxy corn and the waxy beans that are originated in China after these American plants were transplanted from the, transplanted from the new world to the old. I assess by of transportation the primitive types and recessive types in these areas that become recessive after them, not, not before being transplanted to the new world. I, unlike Stoner and Anderson, thus do not have to explain why the identical complex types of maize and the primitive types of maize existed both in the new and the old world simultaneously before Columbus was born. That ARAF distributed complex types that in Aswan, accessive recessive types appear to be the explanation consistent with my theme. So through all that, basically what he's trying to say is that he believes that the air of the more distributed this around the world. You know, corn and stuff like that. That's what he's trying, that's what he's trying to say. He, you know, he, he just called them Arabs. I shall now proceed to give you the lines of Stoner and Anderson evidence of primitive people from the existence of maids in the old world. The Yoruba of southern Nigeria have a tradition that maize reached them from the northeast and not by sea, and that it arrived according to Avadavi, 1924, page 12, during the reign of King Akeshi King Okodon. He reigned long before the arrival of the first Europeans on the coast of Blighton, Benin. Idris, the Arab geographer, Writing in Sierra 1150 says, according to Moore, 1938, page 7, 9, and 14, of the people of Senegal to Lake Chad, that their diet at Shula in the curtains is a kind of a large grain mullet. But no, it's Indian corn, you know, or maize, fish, and preparations of milk. The Nile, the I.E. to Senegal, watches the country, Senegalese, from the east to the west, and there on the banks of the Indian corn grows. The plenty corn, nor of the sorts of grain, is not so is not so great many among them, the Negroes, as large grain of millet from which they make their drink. These people, the people of Sindora born in the kingdom of Quran, likewise drink well water, and eat large grain mullet. So by 1150 AD, large grain mullet, or man, because of these reasons, so in these regions, large grain mullet was already a staple crop from Senegal to Lake Chad. Incidentally, it may be pointed out that any modern dictionary, Mono Grande or Gross Millet, are respectively Portuguese and French named for maize. While in 1550, Mata was described in English as Grosso. The accuracy, the accuracy of the tradition of Valentine Verdes is observation that maize was exported from Guinea to San Tomas before 1502 is thus confirmed. Who then introduced this crop from the Americas to the world? Who then introduced this crop to the old world? 
Research showed that answers lies in the early Spanish name for maize. Trigger the term, in other words, maize was brought by the Arabs, alias the Moors, alias the Saracens, alias the Turks, from the New World to the Old. So he's confirming that we was uh, before Columbus even was taking thing about taking a boat. You know what I'm saying? Over across the seas, whatever. We already know most people already know the story that we was already going back and forth, trading, doing things, setting up African, setting up colonies over there too. You know what I'm saying? Let's not forget that because a lot of these black men, we're black. Men. So he he right here admitting it that the Moors sent this stuff, you know, all over and around the world. Boniface is the first person I know to claim that the Arabs introduced maize into Spain. And maize was said by Santa Rosa de Brown to have been brought by the Arabs into Spain in the 13th century. Dr. Agatha Smith kindly drew my attention to Benarray's account of maize in Italy. He uses, the name he uses for maize is a usual Italian one, Juan de Turco. He wrote in 8th 81, page 311. Some other people think that cereal come from Asia and that it appears in Italy during the Crusades. This theory is warranted by documents found by Judge Francisco Torrin in the archives of existing and published by him in 1515. According to this document called Kind of Donations, whatever, Mace was introduced into Incident Marguerite by in 1204 by Japapo, the local Marquis, and Antonio Magin, both captains under Bonifato di Manifato, on the return from the siege of Constantinople. Those conceived of the American origin of maize consider this document to be a forgery. Among them is the illustrious Canatium. We feel that while there is no reason for forging such a document, it should not be overlooked that Tarzan was published his document 11 years before Amadano made it known to Europe that maize is now being cultivated for the first time in Andalus. In order to clarify a little in all confusion, we decided to read all medieval chronicles available. We must say that we have at least a hundred times found a mention of maize granted to Charles in the time of the existence of the new world Beyond the Seas was utterly undreamed of. So there you have it. So he was basically saying that he he believed and he had the evidence to document it and back it out that the Moors was going back and forth to the New World, bringing back corn, you know, and other things, probably gold, and also, too, setting up colonies. You know what I'm saying? Setting up African colonies, you know what I'm saying, over here in the United States, in what we call the New World, the United States, Brazil, places like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's documented, it's proven, and it's proven over here too. We want to start getting tired of touching more of that. Also, too, if you didn't notice in the story how um, the Moors is in the Philippines, in the, in the Philippines and stuff like that. And I got some documentation on that already done up on my other playlist Black Asia, where they was over there and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, the American Army, we talked about this, you know what I'm saying? The American Army went over there and fought them during the Filipino insurgents. That's the main people they was fighting. You know what I'm saying? With their bolo knives, the same type of knives that we hear in Senegal. You know what I'm saying? They had was making type of knives like that. Anyway, this is a Coast Gear Fun Day, kicking it for you over yours. Much love to you, you know what I'm saying? Doing the thing. Making it do what it do and listening. And hopefully subscribe to the channel because we dropping more black history like this. You know what I'm saying? So peace.